Welcome, everyone. Thank you all for coming out on such a cold evening. Um, I'm Candace uh, Bouchard, uh, City Councilor, Ward 9. And Ward 9 is up on the Heights, and I'm on the Airport Advisory Committee, and I'm also Mayor Pro Tem. And I want to introduce now the rest of our Advisory Committee. The city has many Advisory Committees, and this is the Airport Advisory Committee. And the Airport Advisory Committee is just what it says. We, we advise. Uh, we advise the council. The council makes the finest, uh, final decisions. We don't appropriate any funds. We're completely advisor, advisory to the council. So, uh, and Councillor uh, Gail Matson, Councillor from Ward 8. Uh, she is also um, the councillor, one of the, we're two councillors assigned to the airport advisory committee. And Ward 9 and Ward 8 are up here by the airport. Also on the advisory committee is uh, Richard Bartle, and then uh, Ms. Rita, uh, you moved on me, Rita Constangue Hunt, almost got it right. Uh, Jim McKay, Representative Jim McKay, I don't see him here. Uh, former mayor of the city and current city councilor, Satish Manny, I don't, Satish, I don't see Satish. Uh, we did get Warren Runday, Warren has a plane at the airport, and Gail Wallach, Gail. And then our, our staff uh, is Deputy City Manager Carlos Bahia. And we also have City Engineer Martha Drucker and many, uh, Chip Chesley from Public General Public Works, a lot of different city people here that we can introduce um, later. So the purpose of the meeting is we're very excited about um, the Concord Airport. We think it's a gem in the rough. Uh, we're, we have plans that we're going to be putting forth uh, to the City Council for um, hopefully going forward at some point in time with a new terminal uh, that we think will um, just be a nicer presence, a lot of glass. We're, not only if you're not flying in the airport, if you're in the city of Concord, it's someplace where you can go and see the planes come out and just be a, a nicer experience. But for, and for tonight, we'd just like to hear from you. What do you like for, for the airport? We'd like, you know, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? We think it's just a great gem. And, and we just want to improve on it. And we just want to hear from you. We just want to hear, you know, what is it that we can do better? What is it you think we should be doing? And what do you like? Uh, with, with that, I think I'll introduce Carlos. And we have about a, about a half hour presentation, less than a presentation. And we plan after the presentation, we'll have um, quite time for questions and answers. The uh, tonight's meeting is being recorded uh, through Concord Community TV. It will be available, the video will be available. So uh, folks that are not here that you might know that wanted to be here but could not come for whatever reason, they can view the video and we'll also be taking um, questions, it's the emails we'll go to. I have an email at the end that will be um, specific to this event, so anyone that watches this later on can send any testimony or questions to us. Yeah. And then we'll definitely answer when we get back. Um, so we have one mic. Thank you. All right, well, before we start, so we are going to be talking about um, the airport and we, the opportunity here is really for you to talk to us. But I know there's people here with disparate backgrounds. Some people here, just show of hands, who here is actually in aviation and has a plane, profession, okay, most people, okay. Anybody from the neighborhood who may not be in aviation, just neighborhood resident wants to. I'm in the neighborhood too. And your neighborhood too, he's, okay, you, double whammy, all right. Um, so, so a lot of you may know some of this history, but just, just for the sake of uh, framing the, you know, where we are and how we came to be. So Concord has a, actually I was, I was surprised by this. We have a very long history in aviation, dating back to 1911. The first person to actually uh, fly to Concord was uh, Harry Atwood, who flew all over from Manchester to Nashville to Manchester from Waltham, landing in Concord, flying his biplane. Uh, city thought this is a great thing to do. Uh, community leaders and they established an aviation committee and they wanted to raise money to basically put together an aviation field. They formed the Concord um, Airport Corporation and they petitioned the legislature to buy land for an actual airport. 
Um, in July of 27, one of the seminal events for this sort of emergence of the airport here in Concord was Charles Lindbergh. He was on a US tour. He lands at the airport. This is actually a picture from that, from that event. Uh, that sort of sparked more of the fever. And we had a commercial airline that started to uh, make round trip flights uh, from Concord to Manchester to Boston. And that operated for a few years. And then the syndicate, the aviation syndicate, this group of community leaders, then sold the land they had put together to the city of Concord. And we began clearing the land to build an airport in earnest. So in 1937, the tail end of the uh, depression, we built the uh, administration building and the runway airport, the, the runways at the airport. We also built in 1943 the terminal building. This looks awfully familiar, I'm sure. So this is the same terminal building, uh, minus that I don't believe is there anymore. Um, Northeast Airlines then starts to run commercial service back in the late 40s. Again, another effort at commercial service, although for, from all the hands here in the audience, you know that we're a GA airport and not a commercial airport. Um, in 1961, the terminal building that we just saw was actually expanded because the FAA was going to be here at the National Weather Bureau, so they built the, uh, the wing that goes down to uh, the brick wing. In 73, we expanded the runway to by 1,000 feet. The runway is 6,005 feet. Everybody here probably knows that by heart. Uh, I thought it was the longest runway in New Hampshire in terms of a GA airport, and then I was just told two days ago that, in fact, I was wrong. Now it's no longer that the case, so that was a bummer. So we're the second longest airport uh, runway, I believe. I uh, had another, another airline come to us in the late 70s, Precision Airlines. Again, just a few years. This continued in 1980. And then in 2004, the Army National Guard uh, opened their facility at our, at, our, at our airport. Thank you to the folks in the back. Um, and they've been our principal tenant at the Concord Airport. In addition to the guard, uh, we have several other tenants, including two condominium associations that have private tea hangers. These are organized, from our perspective, from the airport. We just provide the land. The entity then builds the, the tea hangers, and they condominium out, out the units, or in essence, they also rent the units. Uh, the facility today is 614 acres. Uh, I will tell you that's a little misleading, because it, you would think that Wow, 614 acres, that's a lot of room to do all kinds of stuff. But as we'll talk about later on, the majority of the airport is encumbered by conservation easements. Uh, folks probably have heard of the Carner Blue Butterfly. How many people have seen a Carner Blue Butterfly? We have, all right, that's actually pretty good. That's probably the most people, I've asked this question every time I'm meeting at the airport. That's the most people I've seen one, good for you guys. Um, so the Carner Blue Butterfly is an endangered species both at the federal and the state level. So a lot of the airport facility is off limits for development. Uh, and actually, even how we, we, we maintain the grounds is dependent on certain seasons because of the, of the butterfly and other, other wildlife. Um, I mentioned we have the, the 6,005 foot runway. We also have a 3,200 foot runway, the runway 1230, which runs basically sort of an east-west configuration. Um, we all, we like to say as well that it can accommodate large planes. This is for the, for the folks in aviation, you probably know this, this is, but for the folks in the community, probably don't realize that, that you can land a 727 and a C-130 here at the facility. Dave Roller will probably tell you it all depends whether they can take off on how much of everything they have in the, in the airline, in the, in the, uh, um, uh, in the plane. But at least, you know, in theory, we could accommodate those type of aircraft. Um, in terms of the operations, so there's a lot that goes on, even though it's a small airport, particularly this time of the year. I'm sure the guys from our public properties division are gearing up for the big storm we're going to have over the weekend. So the airport itself is overseen by the Community Development Department at City Hall. Um, the Airport Advisory Committee, as Councillor Bouchard has mentioned, they provide all the sort of policy direction and recommendations. The Public Properties Division is in the General Services Department and they maintain the facility. They do all the snow and ice removal, all the, the maintenance of the fields, uh, maintenance of the buildings that belong to the city, et cetera. And then we have an airport manager who's a contracted employee, and the airport manager at Concord has been uh, Concord Aviation Services for the last, since 1994. Uh, and Dave Rolla, Dave's in the back. He's our airport manager, um, and he does a good job for us. So, how do we support the airport? Right? A lot of people have this sort of misconception 
that there are some sort of landing fees or federal dollars that come in based on the amount of planes you have coming in and out. That's actually not the case. Uh, in Concord, our airport is a special revenue fund. So what that means is that it's, it's in theory meant to be completely self-sufficient. So the revenue that comes in is supposed to be enough revenue to offset the expenses. The goal being that it's not ever to touch the city's general fund, which is the taxpayer, property taxpayer fund. Uh, and in fact, this airport has done that for the last 20 to 30 years. Um, and how do we do that? We do it through uh, revenue sources such as fuel flow. So when David and Concord Aviation Services, who are, aside from being our, our airport manager, they're also our fixed base operator. So they'll sell you fuel uh, for the pilots in the room. And when they sell you fuel, if it's jet fuel, 26 cents of every gallon goes to the city airport fund. Uh, if it's uh, aviation gas, seven cents goes to the city airport fund for every gallon. And in terms of leases also, Concord Aviation Services is a tenant. They actually rent four of our hangars. The guard obviously has a land lease at the airport. State police also has a land lease, so the aviation unit for state police, both fixed wing and, and helicopter, is here in, in Concord. Uh, the Civil Air Patrol, anyone from the Civil Air Patrol? All right, cool, thank you for being here. Silver Air Patrol, long time tenant uh, at the airport. They're actually today off airport, but still considered part of the airport family. Um, and they're a great tenant. And of course, I mentioned the private tea hangers that do uh, provide us funding through land leases. Uh, we do have some constraints, as I mentioned. We talked about the conservation restrictions. Uh, there are limitations also at the airport. Obviously, you want to make sure that you, you know buildings have to be a certain height and clearances, things like that, that you don't necessarily have in other parts of the community when you talk about development. Um, <clears throat> FAA requirements, we are bound by the fact that we receive funding from the federal government for, so for example, improvements for safety out at the airport. So anytime we wanted to make new taxiway, new lights, et cetera, those are usually federal grants. And uh, a significant amount, 90% of that grant is from the federal government. 5% will be from the state, and 5% will be from the city of Concord. And when you get money like that, there are some obligations that go along with it. And those obligations mean that if you want to do certain types of development, you do have to go through a process. And we have very good partners at the New Hampshire Department of Transportation Bureau of Aeronautics. Carol, Carol Niwola, who's, uh, she's excellent, and we work with them very closely. And they actually uh, will be a good conduit for anything we have to do with the FAA on in terms of development and anything else, so they're great. Uh, one thing, the reason I have this slide up here is also just to note that aviation is very, very closely tied to economic cycles. It's actually probably more sensitive to economic cycles than a lot of other industries out there. And so this is a slide that just shows sort of the profit margin for aviation. This is largely commercial aviation, but there's still a correlation to the, to the general aviation industry. So you can see how certain events will, will hit and cause massive losses of profit, right? So see here, 2001, September 11th, and it goes negative, starts to come back out. People see this, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, and then you have the crash and the Great Recession in 08, and it starts to come back again, and then you have COVID that hits here. And so I know that David will probably confirm this. We see it here. We see it in Concord. We see it with the amount of planes and activity at the facility. We see it with the amount of fuel that's sold. So we can clearly track how much activity, and if you, if you kind of mirrored it and you put it over this, this chart here, you'd see it very closely would align with what's going on here. Uh, put this slide up here so you can have a full picture of how our budget works for the airport. So we talked about revenues. So we have total revenues, all those components I mentioned earlier, plus a great uh, investment income of $100. So you probably see this. If you have anybody has a savings account at a bank, you know, if you get the dollar, you're really happy uh, after a year of having your money there. So it's been a pretty tough time in terms of the interest rates for us. Uh, total revenue for this fiscal year was projected to be $367,000. Total expenses. <coughs> so you see labor costs here. The labor costs are largely driven by snow and ice events. So if we have a good year, and it depends on your perspective, a good year from my perspective is one with it's 70 degrees all year long, and there's no snow and no ice. Because then this number will drop precipitously, because this is just an allocation of staff resources. And so if we don't do a lot of snow and ice events, we don't have that issue, and, and that number is much smaller. Um, this number is probably, we probably have 
Chip Chesley's in the room here, maybe 20 snow and ice events on a given year. So we'll be out there with all the equipment. If there's not snow, there might be, you might, we might have to put some sort of a product down in, in anticipation of a snow or a rain event that might be dangerous for planes, et cetera. So there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, obviously, we pay the airport manager. Uh, I want to point out this one too here for the folks in the back, property taxes. So remember, we're a special revenue fund. So we're, we're in essence, we're separate from the city. Uh, we're part of the city, but still separate. So we, in fact, the airport pays property taxes uh, to the city of Concord for you know, school district, state, county, et cetera. So we actually pay $46,000 in property taxes every year. Uh, significant amount of debt service, that again, th that's our percentages over the years of those improvements that we get FAA funding for that we have to offset. Uh, and down the line. So the most important detail here is that, we, remember total revenues were 367,000. Total expenditures are 479,000. So that means we've got a problem, right? We're operating on an annual deficit and we have been operating on an annual deficit for several years. Now before, you probably thought, well, Carlos just said a few minutes ago that we're doing pretty well. We're not tapping the, the taxpayer, right? And that's because the, the airport has a fund balance. It's kind of like its savings account that it's managed to keep uh, in the black and it does that because these costs, again, these costs will change. If, again, if I said if we had a, a better year in terms of storms, those numbers will come down. So we may budget higher and we realize we don't spend as much, so that, sa that savings account will replenish again and again and again. But I will tell you right now, when we look at the, the picture going forward, this is, this is our pro forma that we have to show for our, for our budget process. This is fiscal year 25. And in fiscal year 25, as where we stand today, we will be in the red in terms of our fund balance, which means that we will have overexpended our savings account. So that will be a decision point for both the advisory committee and for the city council to figure out, okay, what do we do now? Do we then take general ad valorem taxation dollars uh, from all the properties in the community to offset the, uh, the expenses of the airport? I can't speak for the council, but that's likely. They're, it's very unlikely that they would just let the airport say, no, we're not going to do anything. So I imagine that would have to be something that they would consider and, uh, and take some action on. I'm going to turn it over to Martha to talk about some of our recent projects. So I'm Martha Drucker, and I'm one of the associate engineers with the city of Concord. And my primary role in dealing with the airport is I oversee most of the capital improvement projects. So I'm there to make sure that the infrastructure is safe and complies with all the regulations that the state and FAA put on the city. <clears throat> so I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about some recent projects that we did and why they're important. So in 2019, our most recent project, we actually reconstructed Taxiway A, which is parallel to our main runway, 1735, which runs in the north-south direction. The cost of the construction of this project was about $2.7 million. This is a 6,500 foot runway um, that this parallels to. Um, it hadn't been reconstructed for about 30 years and you know, getting the funds to do this meant was a huge impact to the airport because there were cracks out there that you could put your foot in and wheels in. So the runway was entirely reconstructed um, at a 5% cost to the city. Um, in 2016, we were able to construct a brand new taxiway to runway 1235. So before we were able to, to have this, the, you, you depart and take off on the runways depending on what, where the wind's blowing from a safety standpoint. So if for some reason someone was taking off on 1230 and someone was trying to land, whoever was trying to take off, they'd have to back taxi or drive backwards off, off the runway to let someone land. So with this new taxiway, um, it improves the safety and operations for landing and departing immensely, especially for the National Guard. It abuts their facility. And we also constructed a hold apron. This is like a, a little parking spot. So if someone does happen to have to come in, you can pull over and wait your turn, basically wait in line to, to, to leave. 
Um, Carlos talked a little bit about the conservation area at the airport. And this really comes into play quite a bit when we're doing any kind of capital project. When we did the new taxiway, um, it was new construction. So we were impacting some of the area that's designated as conservation area. So we actually had to go out and inventory the butterflies, the plants, the eggs, all of that, come into an agreement with um, EPA and FAA and come up with a, a cost of what, what the impact, the mitigation cost of having to move or relocate this natural habitat. And in this case, it was about $220,000 that we had to actually dig up a lot of the plants and relocate them to another spot on the airport. And then some of the funds went directly to New Hampshire Fish and Game, who provides overall management for the conservation area on the airport to assist in their management program. So there's a lot involved, no matter what we do at the airport, when it comes to public improvements. So I was talking a little bit about when you, when you, you know, leave and, you know, depart and, and enter the runway, how you land and leave, and most of you guys know this because you're pretty much airport professionals, but for a lot of the residents, there's, people aren't like driving over neighborhoods just to annoy you for their plane. So they're required to have a certain pattern when they take off and land on the airport. And this was just really to show, you know, it's basically you continue left to, to enter, to, to land on the airport. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for this. It's kind of like, <clears throat> you know, if you're driving down the highway, you have to stay in your own lane. It's the same thing up in the airspace as it relates to runways. So this is just to show we have two runways in each one, how you land and depart. There's a certain pattern, so the airspace is safe for other aircraft. So this is an interesting project. Um, when we were doing the, the Taxiway B project um, in 2016, it was actually a pilot that was driving over the airport and contacted Dave Roller and said, there's a huge hole on the other side of the airport. And this is on the westerly edge of the airport, um, kind of over in this area here. And you can see this is the airport fence up here. So this is the fence that surrounds the whole airport. And the pilot noticed this big hole and it turns out this is the outfall to our drainage for the whole southern part of our main runway. The drainage kind of goes cross country and enters or exits into this what used to be a, a whole tiered drainage system. And over time it had eroded and totally collapsed. And it was pretty impressive. It was, this, uh, it's down about 75 feet from grass elevation and extended out about 300 feet. So this wasn't budgeted for. <laughs> and it was considered almost like a maintenance item. So as Carlos talked about the budget, the repair costs were in the vicinity about $350,000, which the city didn't have. So, you know, Carlos mentioned our working relationship with, with Division of Aeronautics, with DOT. So Carol was able to work with us to get money allocated for other communities in the state that weren't using it during that year. And we could actually take those dollars and pay the community 5% of what their match would have been. So we talked about the 90%, 5%, 5%. So we were actually able to do this, this whole repair at only 5% of the, of the total cost. And it was funded from other entitlement dollars that were allocated throughout the state with DOT. So this project is, this is our terminal building. Um, on the top photo is before, and believe me, it looks worse than that if you actually go in it. And the bottom one is after. Um, the Airport Advisory Committee actually worked with City Council and the late Joe Alosa and his wife to come into a partnership where the Alosas donated staff time, about $20,000 worth of labor, and the city donated 
or allocated $20,000 worth of funds, and we worked with CHIPS Group, um, the Public Properties Division, for a total cost of about $40,000 $40, to renovate or, or redo just the lobby area. We're not talking about the brick wing that extends off of that. And it was quite extensive. There were asbestos tiles. There was mold. Um, we brought it up. It was pretty much ADA compliant. We brought it up to ADA code. All new paint, new flooring, new furniture. Back here, there's a pilot's lounge. And if any of you go in there, it's used quite often now. People, we have meetings up here quite a bit. And that's Dave, our airport manager. And you usually don't see him smile this much. And this is, we had to put this picture up here because he was so happy when this got done. Um, so we talked about equipment, plow equipment. So equipment's expensive. And this is also funded through the, the federal and state program. So just recently, um, it's actually sitting in General Services parking lot as we speak, we were able to purchase a, a dump truck with plow attachments. And that cost about probably $250,000. This was just delivered, but our actually grant that we apply to the, to the state to, to get the equipment happened in 2020 when the pandemic hit. And during that year, unfortunately, we weren't like rebuilding our whole runway. Um, but during that year, FAA granted 100% to any grant in the system during that year. So this piece of equipment we recently purchased was paid 100% through the Federal Aviation Administration. In 2015, we purchased a new loader that's used over the airport, mostly again during snow and ice events, but also you know, maintenance. Uh, the crews use it for maintenance throughout the year. This is our snow um, removal equipment building that was built in 2006. This is located after the, you see the helicopter on Regional Drive after the um, National Guard facility. So that driveway, if you go up that driveway, you'll come up to, to this building. Um, and it's adjacent to one of our hangers off the old abandoned runway. Another, another interesting activity at the airport, and this is fairly new. This um, is a group of people, aerobatic flyers. Um, they, they were historically doing flying over the Henniker Dam. And they, they pretty much did that because they could use the dam as a reference, reference point. They do all kinds of aerobatics up in the sky. And they've been working with Dave Roller and for quite a few years now, trying to get into Concord. They wanted to rela relocate their activity to Concord, mostly because of the facilities and infrastructure that we have. A lot of airports in the state can't house this type of activity because of either obstructions around their airports or the mountainous terrain that we have. So in working with the Airport Advisory Committee and City Council, they granted this activity at the airport. And this, this box is, this, all this flying and activity has to all be approved by FAA. So they had to submit an application. And this area on the south end of our main runway, kind of down towards Merchants, um, the Nissan dealer down off of Airport Road in Manchester Street, this is the box they're allowed to fly in. And um, we're going to see a video of that in a couple minutes here. So yeah. So we'll, we'll show you what it's like. And actually, Mike, who's running the camera back there, and where's Paul? Here's Paul. So Paul's the pilot of, he's here tonight. Um, I would never do that, but. But it's a great activity for the community, too. You know, when they're doing it, you can pull out your lawn chairs in your backyard. You can watch this. Um, and we'd like to work with, the, with this group moving forward. Um, to grow this. It's also great for economic development because these planes have to buy fuel and that helps with our, our bottom line budget. So that's kind of a, a, a new thing at the airport that would like to grow on. Another thing that happens is the Wings and Wheels event. A lot of you have participated in this in the past. <clears throat> We've done, been doing this for the past seven or eight years. And this is an event that started with 
an organization called Granite State Airport Managers Association, which is made up of you know, airport managers throughout the state and supporting um, aviation professionals. And um, you know, it's a great way to get the community involved in the airport, see what the airport does. We have all kinds of interactive activities that occur, and the, the, the main purpose of the event was to raise money to promote science, technology, engineering, and math for you know, young, or young professionals or young people interested in going into the aviation profession. So we're going to be doing it again this year. It's going to be September 24th. So we'll be, we'll be reaching out you know, to the community and, and to the people that have worked with us in the past to, to get more details on this. Um, in 2020, when, uh, 21, when the pandemic hit, we haven't held the event for the past two years. And there's a committee, Rita's here, Rita works on the committee. Um, there's a committee that really wanted to do something special since we couldn't host the committee in person. So we, we decided to put together a it's, a, it's a virtual platform of the airport. And it, it's kind of a neat tool. So this is what it is. This is an aerial photo of the airport. And we collected videos, and Mike um, with CCTV helped us quite a bit with this, and Stephanie Breton, who's our public information officer. And we went around and collected videos of all different resources and activities that are offered at the airport. So we have videos of what our plow operations are like and you know, different tenants that are at the airport, the flight school, the, the Carna Blue Butterfly Management Program. And this is now on our website. And you can click on these videos. And you know, one of the issues was a lot of the, a lot of the local schools were working remotely. So how can we engage the community and the school age kids? And we thought this is one great area where they could get an assignment to go look at this and see if there's anything here that interests them. And over time, we can upload this you know, as we move forward. So these videos are, are changing constantly. So with that, um, this is the bit.ly. If you want to take a picture of that with your phone, you can access that, that virtual platform immediately. Um, and start playing around with it. And it, it's, uh, is it on our website now? Not yet. Tomorrow. Not yet. Tomorrow. Tomorrow so it'll be on the city website also. So with that. OK, so Martha did a great job talking about some of the stuff that we've done in the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, let's just talk now about sort of the future. And this will lead up to the discussion that we're hoping that you'll give us some, some good input on. Um, so as it was alluded to, I think, by Councillor Bouchard, one of the projects that is in our capital improvement program for the city that we're most excited about is a new terminal building. So you might be asking yourself, didn't you just say you renovated the lobby of the, of the old terminal building, which we did. Uh, it was meant to just be a, a fix, a Band-Aid, because the community had told us for several years that you know, it really was an embarrassment. And so we had to do something. And we didn't have the capability yet to prepare ourselves to, to actually tear down the facility and build something new. We're getting there now. We've actually been putting aside our annual allocation of funds uh, from the federal government, putting it aside so that we're building up a piggy bank to have as a, as a match, basically, to allow us to uh, offset the cost to do this, this terminal building. So this was um, Jacobs Engineering is our airport consultant. And they worked with a, uh, an architectural firm to put together some of these renderings that show what this facility could look like, uh, a lot of glass meant to look sort of like aviation oriented in terms of how the roof line goes and things like that. So this will look a lot different than what's out there today. I hope, hopefully folks will agree with that. Uh, but again, this is not set in stone. This right now is in our capital program. I think it's a project we've all talked a lot about. But again, that's why we're here this evening to get some input from you as to sort of what you think the priorities sh should be. Uh, one advantage also with building a new terminal building is it would allow us the capability to create more space at the airport that could be developed. Uh, as you recall, we talked about over 85% of our airport is encumbered by conservation and by conservation easements. So because of that, we really have to maximize the remaining land that can be developed, because that's how we'll get revenue in terms of land leases to offset the cost to operate the airport. So today, the terminal building, this is Airport Road Regional Drive. 
the terminal building is more or less right here. So what we are proposing with a new terminal building is actually to put the new terminal building here, sort of off of Regional Drive, because during our public hearings for this process, one of the things that was mentioned was if you're in the community and you're, in, and you're not necessarily in aviation, so if you're in aviation, you know you're on the airfield, you're flying, taking off, landing. You see it all from your perspective. But the community, the best vantage point for people to really get engaged, young children all the way to folks you know, in, in later years, is looking at the runway straight on. Right, You can actually see the planes taking off and landing. And this offers the best vantage point. So the notion was to move the terminal there which then allows this existing area to be used for potentially for a future hangar, which could generate some revenue. Some of the other programs that are right now in the capital budget um, are in the tie-down area. So we're, the tie-down areas, if you have any planes down there or if you've been in that general area recently, you know they're in tough shape. Uh, I think public properties is patched together as much as we can over the years. They are proposed to be um, rebuilt uh, in fiscal year 26. Now, I wouldn't get too hung up about the years here. The way the city's capital budget works is that uh, the, the main year we're in, or that we're about to enter, that's the, that's the year that the, the council's truly focused on. The out years, we call the additional years, are just their, basically their, their planning, planning processes. So we can kind of know, like, that's projects, those are projects we want to get to. Whether they happen in fiscal 25 or 26, 27, it could change based upon Again, what the community might want based upon the dollars we have and other priorities in, in the community. So we have the runway 1735. Uh, also, there is a project right now in the books to reclaim that runway. Uh, this, as you can see here, this would be a pretty expensive project for us. Or we're talking over basically over $6 million here to, to do that. Um, but that is also one of the things, so again, thinking about what what are the most important things to do at the facility? The abandoned runway that has basically been used as a taxiway for several years, that will also need to be reclaimed. Uh, we have it right now pro projected for fiscal year 29 uh, to the tune of a million dollars. Again, these numbers also, they're estimates at this point. Everybody knows with inflation right now, if you've had to price out any home, home improvement project, you know, if you priced it out last year and you priced it out this year, you're gonna have sticker shock, right? So the same thing will probably happen with these costs. And then we're going to have to start looking at our hangars. So I love this picture. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be a little hard to see. But this is a picture, probably 1943. There's the terminal building. There's hangar one. I can't even tell. That might be hangar two. But, so that's hangar one, right? There's nothing around it. Look, it's all trees. The whole neighborhood doesn't exist yet. But this building is still there. And Dave Roller will probably tell you, we probably haven't done a whole lot to it since that time, probably, right? It's pretty much. Very authentic. Yeah, it's still pretty much the way it was right. in 1943. Right, it's very genuine, authentic. People love that vintage look, right? Yeah, so, LED lights now. what's that? So, we're going to have to, uh, there's four of these. So, the city owns four hangars. And they're roughly all in just relative states of deterioration, right? And so, we're going to have to figure out what do we do with the hangars? Are we have put new roofs on the hangars over the years? We get to a point, fiscal year 30 now, where the hangar would have been around for 90 years, basically. Do you, do you think that maybe that's the time to not start replacing them? It's not going to be cheap to replace the hangars. Uh, and again, city council historically has looked at investments across the city as to, is there a return on the investment? So what's the return on the investment to rebuild a hangar? So we have to kind of think about that as well. Uh, and that leads us to the notion of, can, can we develop the land that we have, right? So we have a pocket of land at the sort of northeastern end of the airport uh, off the, uh, the, taxi, the abandoned runway, I should say, that could be developed. There's water and sewer nearby. We, in fact, put out a request for interest this past year, uh, and we didn't get any responses, uh, which it's OK. That happens sometimes. But we're open. So what I'm saying to you right now, we are open to considering any proposal. I think would bring it to the, the airport committee. Uh, to develop land, there's different parcels here. This can be divided up in different ways. Uh, it can be used for aviation. It can also be used for non-aviation. We know that we'll have to work through the FAA for that. Uh, but there's parcels that are right on Regional Drive that would potentially have some access onto Regional, which could be attractive. Uh, there's other parcels here that are, would have the access onto the taxiway, which also has some appeal, particularly if it's for 
uh, uh, aviation-related uh, uses. And that's pretty much sort of the history and, and up to this point. I think we're going to take just like maybe five minutes, a little break, okay. and transition to we're going to have Heath Marsden with uh, Jacobs Engineering come up and start facilitating some conversations. Good evening, everybody. My name is Heath Marsden. I'm a senior planner with Jacobs Engineering. We're the airport's uh, consulting engineering and planning firm. I have the pleasure tonight, I get the easiest part. I'm actually just going to go through a bunch of polling questions and we'll take pauses periodically throughout. Natalie is a planner that works with me with Jacobs and uh, John Gorham, one of our engineers and my boss, will be here to help people if you run into any issues with the polling. Um, it's a text-based polling. If you have any questions or any problems, just raise your hand and we can come over and help you with that. So the first thing is we're going to start with an icebreaker. So the first two polling questions here are just meant to kind of break the ice, uh, test out the polling app. So the first one is uh, when you take out your phones, if you text Con Airport 055, so send a text to Con Airport 055 to 22333, and that'll let you join the polling discussion. Okay. So the first question, if you were a taste bud, what would you be? Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, or all of the above? So I'll give, uh, I'll give just a minute to answer the question. Did everyone get the number? And it's Con, Con, Con Airport 055. Anyone C, C, C O N. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm So on your phone, if you open your text app, open up your text app, and then text C O N. Just start a new text. Yep, start a new text. Text the number you're going to text it to is two two three three three, and you're going to text Con Airport zero five five. What's the text? Con Airport or two three three three? Two two triple three. Yeah, once you get in, you'll get, when you do it successfully, you'll get a text that says that you're in the texting poll. Is there anybody else that needs help? We'll give one more minute. John, how's that coming? I have a droid. Android. Yeah? I don't even know. That looks like an Android. Yeah? But that's not the number. It's a zero five five. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna put in like as if you text like a new number contact. Yeah, I don't know how to text a brand new number. Oh, okay. well, evidently, I'm not the only one here that's confused. All right, so if you if you hit your phone, yeah, is there a text? Uh, there's a keypad. Contact. Oh, okay. All right, so that, that's not a texting app then. All right, we'll uh, we'll just go. We'll just move forward then. Yeah. Okay, all right, so, oh, that's good. So the majority of people are feeling sweet. That's <laughs> excellent. We got a good crowd. All right, the next one. We know that everybody apparently is excited to be here. How is everybody feeling tonight? Are you delighted to be here, joyful to be here, mildly ecstatic, exuberant, or over the moon to be here tonight? So in that same text string that you did, Type in A, B, C, D, or E. OK. 
Okay, I'll just give a few more seconds for everybody. Well, that's pretty good. Is that some over the moon people here, huh? Excellent. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll move on to the, the actual serious questions here. All right, we know that there are some local businesses here, there are some residents here. So this question is for the folks here that represent a local business. Do you see the airport as an asset? A or B if you do not? Well, that's good. So far, we've got a pretty good crowd. No anti-airport people here, apparently. All right, next question. Oops. For residents and local businesses and the folks that represent the Guard, are there any infrastructure improvements that would increase your use of the airport? For example, Yep, that's right, text a word please. So example, along a runway, hangars, a restaurant. Yep, just type in, in one, one word please. So you'll see the, the more responses we get, so if everybody says restaurant, that's gonna be the, the largest word. So, so far there's quite a few people that would like a restaurant. So, so far we have food, building, diner, restaurant, a playground. There are some very successful playgrounds at airports. New Bedford has a, a really nice playground that gets used quite a bit. Okay, has it, it, everybody answered? I assume so, yep. Yeah, so. One question though, I see, what, I see like trucks up there. I don't know if somebody can explain what trucks are. I just want to understand it. Because we're, by the way, the reason they're doing this in part is so we're going to record this. This allows us to capture this data so that we can use it later on when you, when you count. Food trucks. Food trucks, okay. All right. Great, thank you. Must be a lot of hungry pilots out here. Jeremy, time on food trucks for a while? Okay, do you currently use the airport or have you used the airport in the past? Text A if yes, B if no. Okay, the major oh, there's a couple of people that have not used the airport. For those of you that have used the airport, how often? Text A if you've used it more than 20 times or more a month. B, 10 to 19 a month, five to nine times for little. And D, if less than five times a month, E, never, or if you never even knew there was an airport here, text F. And if I, could I add, so the F option here, which thankfully no one's using, because you all came tonight, so you probably know we have an airport, it's good. Um, <laughs> but you, you might be surprised to know that we get that a lot at City Hall. Uh, People who, when we start talking at meetings, things like that, over the public, and we say, we mention we have an airport, people look at us like, what are you talking about? What, what airport? Manchester? It's like, no, we have an airport here. <laughs> so one of the things I'd, lo I'd love to know this evening is what, like, what, what alternatives, what efforts, what things you, should, you think we might want to do or should be doing to increase that awareness. I mean, if you're in the aviation business, you know it, right? You take it for granted, perhaps, like, you know, like we do for a lot of things in our lives. But if you're an outsider, what do you think would capture their attention? You know, what would bring them to the airport or at least get them interested in knowing more about it? Hopefully that's something we can capture soon. All right, for those here, are you an airport tenant, a resident, a local business, an airport user, or none of the above? Text A, B, C, or D, please. Okay, more than half of people are tenants, looks like.
Okay, for this, you can text multiple times and you can use a word. So you can text one word or different words multiple times. For those that are here, that are local business owners, what do you see are the airport's strengths? It could be location potentially, um, available land, other infrastructure. Give one more, a few more seconds. <clears throat> so for those that put services, does anybody want to expand on that? What services specifically are they um, the FBO services related to aviation fueling, or anybody want to expand on what that might be as far as services? Well, they have repairs, they have avionics, they have fuel, they have hangers. Okay. Are there any services that we're missing that you think we should have? That will be on the next slide. Oh, that's the next one? Sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, for the residents here, actually it's the next slide after this, then we'll go into the weaknesses as the strengths, but for the folks that are residents, what strengths do you see as the airport offers? Excellent. I think that's about it. So location, <clears throat> location, events. The airport has done quite a bit uh, to foster more events with the community. There will be some more questions on events as we move along as well. So location, access, connections, a gateway to the capital region, training the Army, school. As a local, now, there, now we get into the weaknesses. There's a question on weakness for the local business folks as well as the residents. So on this one, as a local business owner, what do you see as the airport's weaknesses? The infrastructure, I'm assuming folks mean the, the poor pavement conditions on the tie down apron, potentially the terminal building is in fairly bad disrepair. Oh. Hangers. Can I ask about plane spotting? Is that there's no area for plane spotting? Or? Yeah, oh, I put all the things. Access, in other words, trying to get access to be able to. Yeah, so having a turnoff here like Manchester Airport has a, an area where dedicated people can go watch airplanes. Yeah. Hopefully, the new terminal building resolves some of that too. The way it's located is as an anchor position. Yes, sir. Um, I suggest that you take advantage of the Chamber of Commerce in regards to visitor services that you have and the uh, I'm a little concerned that you're planning on leaving this meeting, making some further de decisions 
based upon this survey. I'm, I'm concerned about that because I don't think this hardly speaks for this community at all, especially the business community. And if you're going to do this kind of a survey, take advantage of some of the other folks in town who can give you good, solid information. Mm -hmm. I happen to be a resident, and I happen to be old enough that playing with my computer with my telephone to answer these questions, I'll be here all night trying to answer those questions. I don't know how many other people in this room are not taking advantage of your survey because you're asking us to use technology that maybe we're not able to use. Mm -hmm. That's the second point. The third point, as a resident, I think the Air Force is a fantastic place. But I have a lot more that I would like to say about this, but I'm not even responding to these questions because I'm not capable of, of doing it at this point. And maybe I'll get another way to give you some feedback. Absolutely. There will be numerous opportunities for feedback, aside from this forum. All right, for the con residents in the room, what do you see as the airport's weaknesses? <laughs> well, I would suggest you do a lot more marketing, but the airport has no staff to do that kind of thing and no money to do it. So until we take a serious look at the airport and the advantages that it offers us, uh, not much is going to happen. The airport, we are very, very fortunate to have such a nice airport. And the folks in that group that are taking advantage of it, and that's a special group of people who can perhaps afford to do it, or their work at, or public job has something to do with it. The airport is important. For the average resident down in, down in town, what airport? And now I'm getting carried away a little bit, but I think there's a great deal more we could do to let people know what a fantastic airport we have and at the same time tell people what it's doing for our community. Uh, the, the numbers in terms of dollars didn't impress us too much, me too much, because unfortunately it's losing money. But the airport is, uh, we could be doing a lot of other activities out here to draw people to the airport and make them enjoy it. It's a huge, nice facility. It's got conservation pieces that will definitely uh, be appropriate for a whole bunch of people in our community who appreciate the part of blue and that and put a little uh, uh, thought into it. Perhaps a, perhaps the airport uh, advisory committee could have a committee that looks at the marketing side. Uh, perhaps. Uh, again, I don't mean to do too much topic, but I have been involved in the airport in the past, and I believe it's a great asset. We just need to let people know it's here and find more ways to take advantage of it and try to, we need a mediator between the people who think they own the airport and can afford to take care of the airport and those who may see it as a community asset and a place to have community activities and so forth. There's a, there's a whole bunch of rules about using airports mm -hmm. that do not encourage you to use it for fun. And so we better start talking about that. That's a huge drawback to taking the FAA money. Yeah. But I couldn't agree more. Getting the community involved is paramount to an airport's success. I actually run a small airport as a side job in the state of New Hampshire. And we don't take FAA money, and we're allowed to do many more things, as to your point, sir. But 
also, you know, the, the city has done more and more over the last couple of years with the Wings and Wheels thing, which is a great opportunity for folks to come out and see the airport, experience it that otherwise would not get the opportunity to. So. Yes, I'm not being critical of the FAA or the Rosie. I'm so concerned about safety. They definitely have been concerned about safety. That's a huge thing. They're going to share it. And they're using the airport. Not being critical of that particularly, but there needs to be a way to make this marriage work a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. The, I mean, uh, the infrastructure, I'm going to ask. <clears throat> so, see the infrastructure, marketing. So, Jim, you're not alone, by the way. There's other people on here that felt that marketing is also one of the, one of the weaknesses. So, um, on the infrastructure piece, any specific areas of infrastructure that are most salient to you? I guess were people talking about the paved yeah. surfaces or the buildings? I guess that would be a big element to see. Oh, yeah. Not it? specifically what we experienced with, with the civil rights and all things, but you know, um, I do hear this from other people when I talk to them in the Asian industry, but some of the transient, you know, there's not a place to keep, if you're a business and you fly a jet here, there's no place to, there's no hangar for it. Okay. You know, okay. Not a Yep. But there's not a lot of transient space for, for people. They got to park it on the ramp. Sometimes they don't want to. You know, they'll go to Laconia. Maybe there's a place that they can stash it up there. I don't know. Okay. Okay. This actually goes more towards your point. Sir, uh, so what activities could the airport offer that we would like to see? For example, the Wings of Wales event that the city already does, educational or recreational opportunities. So we'd like to get some feedback and ideas that the airport can continue along those lines in the future. to get in quite a few hits. Steve, I think when you were manager of Nashville, you did a movie night, correct? We did. It was, huge. It was hugely popular. Uh, it, it was a great draw for, for, the, uh, for the airport. Um, you know, we had it right adjacent to one of our aprons there at the airport, and uh, people loved it. You know, we, had, we offered popcorn, and, uh, and, and it, you know, it, it was a free event that, that you know, families, and I don't care, you know, all the parents in here to testify to this, we're always looking for something free to do with our kids. Mm -hmm. as cheap. Especially as pilots. Any pilots in the room know that. We're about the cheapest crew out there. You know, a free event at an airport is a home run for, 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 for a lot of us. So and you were at an FAA obligated airport too, and you didn't have too many challenges, I think, we pulling them off. And HDOT to, to make sure that, I mean, you know, they have their concerns because they need to make sure that the money that the the federal dollars and the state dollars that are being spent. I mean, they need to make they need to make sure that um, you know that people aren't don't have the wrong impression about the money that's being spent at these airports. So you know they, they have an important job to do, and they were they were great. NHDOT is always great to work with for these kinds mm -hmm. of events. Um, they understand the the importance of the community and getting people to the airports, and they're 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 always more than happy to help. Agreed. I was really thinking the barbecue would be a the barbecue would be a bigger hit. And just it's very small letters, but I like I like barbecue. I like your heads out whoever had barbecue. So that was you. Good job, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about the food. Yeah. <laughs> what is AMA? So there's some I see Thunderbird up there, fireworks. So the the airport years and years ago actually has had from what Martha's told me we had a lot of concerts. There were, uh, we had, I know in the 80s, there were flying uh, shows and things like that that, 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 came, that came to the community. And those sort of moments where there was, unfortunately, so this was before I got here, but I heard there was a crash. And so that kind of did away with, with a lot of that. Um, but again, these are things that you know we could take a look at if, if the community felt so inclined. We'll, you know, they're on the list here, so we'll definitely you know review and see what, what we can do. Okay, good. 
Okay, this one, uh, this one you have to go out and use a web uh, page for. So if you have Google or Firefox or something along that line, you'll go to, you'll type in pollev.com backslash con airport 055. And the question is, is where is the airport's best development opportunity? And when you go into that on the web, you can place a marker or conversely, for those who don't have the technology, we can come up here and place a mark or point to a place on the photograph of the airport. Well, actually, because we're just Delby, trying to get people to do that can be kind of tough. Mm -hmm. Well, just tell me right now. So you go to the airport. And the question is, if, if you could have your way right, with, the, with the facility, in essence, if there were no restrictions, where do you think we should <coughs> focus our development efforts? <coughs> Knowing that this is the airport right here. Terminal buildings up here. The hangers, the guards up there. It wouldn't have to depend on what you want to put there. Somebody put a playground. You're not going to put it over there, you know what I mean? You're mm -hmm. going to put it somewhere else. You can convert the guard area to a playground. <laughs> it's already a playground. <laughs> but, I mean, you've already scoped out the areas for development in the prior slide, Carlos. I don't know okay. what other property or, or real estate is going to be available for development beyond that. Yeah. So one of the things we're looking at and is potentially to we convert some of our uh, conservation easement land, particularly that's sort of down on, on the, uh, the airport roadside, and see if we can swap it out to some other part of the airport or off airport land. And that would open up some extra development potentially along airport road. So that's one of the areas where we're trying to, to focus on. Um, but that is questionable. We still have to get approval to do that. We do have a couple pins placed up here. Oh, good. You got pins, all right. One at the end of. Uh, Oh, three of them now. Oh, four. So what is it you want to put on the end of the runway? Yeah. So, so this. More runway. Yeah. This is not. This is not used. This, this is not used right here. This is where um, you had as your development zone. Yep, up here. Yep. Yep. This is one of the runways, and then this is the main one. Right. There's a green pen to the east. Yep. So we have one here. Oh, right here. Yep. And then two up here. So does anybody want to expand on? So the person that put a pin here, would you care to expand on what you think the development opportunity might be? No. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody who wants to elaborate on the areas that they pinned? No. The, the, uh, that's prime, prime blue territory that may exist. There's, nobody's shown me any, I've never seen a kind of blue buck, butterfly yet. And I've lived here for 45 years. And I mean right here, right across the street. I think so, I wished one on my uh, windscreen. They, <laughs> I think a good idea if we're going to develop something on the airport. And this, I only say this with tongue slightly in cheek because I've been saying it for years. But why can't we take the two kind of blue butterflies that might be here, put them in a nice, comfortably insulated oatmeal tube, and send them all expense paid to any destination of their own choosing where there are kind of blue folks with unrestricted. Uh, Breeding grounds with no airports, no anything around. <laughs> and then we could use all that land that's blocked off in the kind of blue and put something else on it. That seems reasonable to me. Yes, sir. This is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. If you had some environmentalists in the world and they were pointing out to you that that's a fine barrier out there, and that's the only place that kind of blue lives. And there's only one out in New York State, and I believe there's one up in Ossipi, that this is very, very important to them. But his suggestion makes some sense, or there's room for discussion. You're going to have to bring the right people in the room who can talk about these two ends, you know, the far right, the far left, and then there's going to be some folks in the middle who are, are going to make some sense about where we go forward. There's, uh, 
Uh, you know, there's a stream that goes right through the uh, port. Why aren't fish and game showing up places for kids to fish? Now, what a crazy idea. But it happens to be there. That's my point. Thank you. All right, if the airport can improve on one thing, yes, sir. Um, oh, Dave. Yep. There's a number of airport users here, uh, and I, I'm just curious about the, um, the people that are based in the northeast hangars on the closed runway. Is it a significant factor that the fueling equipment is all the way on the other side of the airport and you've got to come over, or is that not such a big deal? In, in, and I'm asking this question in the concept of where would be the next place to develop because the, the self-serve pump, the maintenance facility is on one side of the field and the northeast hangers are uh, you know a mile and a half away is is that a is that a problematic situation or is continuing to develop over in, over in that area okay anybody can answer yes sir I happen to be an owner of one of the hangers over there. At this point, it's not significant to me. The uh, FBO will bring a fuel truck over if you like, but if the development is significant enough over in that northeast corner, it might get alleviate the traffic on the ramp area where the self-service is now. That's the only advantage I can see. Okay. If they moved it over there, because you know, for instance, Laconia has self-service and it's kind of out of the way. It's over by MSM Aviation. Mm -hmm. It could it could be an advantage to get fueling self-service fueling traffic over to that area and kind of get out of the way of the day-to-day -day operation. Because right now it's it's right in front of Craig Avionics, so you've got Avionics traffic. You've got all the other traffic coming in there, they want you fuel, you're, you're waiting sometimes. It's not, it's not what I would call significant, but it could be. Okay, great, helpful. thank you. Okay. Any other responses to Dave's question? Okay, uh, so let's see. The one thing that the airport could improve on, the terminal, okay. Self-sustainment, revenue, marketing, a friendly community, signage. By jet, they mean uh, more additional marketing, more jet traffic, accommodating jet traffic, both. Any comments or Questions on this one, Carlos? All right, we're nearing the end. This is two more slides. Was this information session informative for you? A for yes, B for no. Please rate today's airport listening session. A for poor, B for fair, C for good, D for excellent. And lastly, how can we improve communications with you in the future? These are just one word answers, please. So to that end, is there a sign sheet going around? Yeah. 
hoping you've had a chance to sign up, what we're going to do is if you leave your email address with us, any future communications follow up from, from this session, if we're doing future meetings like that, we'll include you in all those communications. That concludes this portion. I'll turn it back over to Ms. Bouchard. Thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you um, everyone for coming. But if there are people who, you know, not te technology savvy or w weren't comfortable, it was, is there anything anyone would you know, like to say or, um, thought they might have an opportunity to say, to um, help um, um, the city staff and the airport advisory committee going forward. You know, I, Mr. Milliken is right on target. This is just the first of outreaches that we're doing in this format, but obviously, you know, we're getting out to the bigger community of Fish and Game, I believe, was invited. And so, because if you don't see someone in the room, doesn't mean they weren't invited. But we really want to hear uh, what the users want and what the community wants, both uh, Councillor Matson and I live up here in this area, so we're really sensitive to the neighborhoods so we can, uh, so we can make it work for everyone and a vision for this airport. We do have a gem. We think it can be more viable. We think it can be an asset even for those who don't fly um, as having a restaurant somewhere to come watch the planes. And at the same time, having uh, the safety of the National Guard here, the Civil Air Patrol. There's a lot going on that we can highlight more and having our Concord Fire Department just a breath away. So um, with all that, I, unless anyone has anything to say. And I, I encourage everyone, please, that's the uh, email address for the session. So feel free to uh, pass it on to anyone else who you might encounter that has an interest in the airport and can yeah. provide us some feedback, please. And the airport, uh, we meet the, when do we meet? We meet today, it's the uh, third, third Thursday. Thursday. The third Thursday of the month, um, the airport, um, we meet every month, the third Thursday of the month. So, and it's open, meetings are open to the public. So, think of something else and you want to come chat, please do. Yes, sir. You might want to update your slide on a 727 the Well, you're the second. You're the second person to tell me that. Roy Schreiker brought that up earlier, that we need a, a, a bigger plane. Maybe we can put something and large. Meetings are on the fourth Thursday, today's the fourth Thursday, so fourth Thursday of every month. Fourth Thursday. Yeah, the third Thursday is our pack. Thank you. So anyway, well, thank you all for coming, and I hope to see you again. And if you think of anything, just, you know, just Carl, call Carlos, sir. <laughs> <laughs>